to peeps is angel holt with angel holt designs i am here to show you a fabulous tutorial i have always 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 wanted to make a brooch bouquet and today i'm going to show you how i am going to make a brooch bouquet and how i have prepped all of my uh, pieces that i want to go onto the bouquet so i'm going to uh, talk you through it um, this will be a lengthy tutorial, so for those that are annoyed with long tutorials, um, you can fast forward or don't watch. I don't care. So, anyway, okay, first things first is you're going to gather you up different beautiful pieces of bling. I have collected my bling over the years. I have gotten it from broken pieces of jewelry. I have purchased it personally. So a lot of things to get my collection going. Now, and before, um, I know there's probably a video out there or a, someone talking about it because I was telling people that I had showed sneak peeks on my Facebook that there is a lady on YouTube's husband showed her how to twine a uh, wire really tightly um, to to make your bling stable for the bling bouquets and I had already had my bling done because my husband in fact done the same very thing he um, I told him I said well I've got this wire in here and I'm having a hard time twisting it together and he's like well give me let me get my drill and he drilled it for me so what I done was is I took a 22 gauge wire and I chose my bling and I chose inconspicuous places so don't use silver wire on gold bling it will you'll see it forever so if you're going to use silver bling use silver wire if you're going to use copper wire use some copper or rose goldish bling so I've picked up some pieces and what I done was it depended on the the large of uh, the size of the bling also it depended on the style of the bling where I placed the pieces of wire so I just basically bent it in half made a loop pushed it through there and I would do another one on this side and then I would get uh, tell my husband I would say okay here are the wires and he would take the end of the wire stick it into the chuck of his uh, handheld uh, drill and and it would tighten it up and make this a stiff piece for the um, the bouquet and that's exactly what I did so yes it's been out there yes I don't know who done the video but some people were like did you see this lady and I'm like I see a lot of ladies online so I'm sorry if I don't know your name but my husband done the same thing our husbands are great in the story so they help us out okay now the construction of my bouquet is a half of a styrofoam ball or a six inch styrofoam ball I wanted to do a half and this happens to be about a two inch round piece of uh, cardboard tubing from Christmas paper okay the length of my handle was six inches so what I done was is I cut it off and I burrowed a hole in there like that as you can see there I took my hot glue and stuck it in there and to seal it around that so I know that if the bride carries it moves it rocks it throws it or whatever because before you make all of this wonderful stuff the construction of the ball of the bouquet has to be to par you just can't go to Walmart or Joann's grab a stick stick it inside of a ball and start gluing stuff on it and think it's sturdy it is not you've got to think of how long this thing is going to be handled how long it, it, if it's going to be the tossing bouquet and also if she's going to keep it it's going to stay the beautiful as the day you made it and you want that sturdiness you want that good construction okay so after i put the hot glue in i twisted it in and then i took e6000 this is their new extreme tack it's a permanent uh really permanent uh, glue and i sealed around this like caulking okay and 
then with the bling elements and all of that done, I have this piece finished. Again, showing you the same setup. Now, the, what I done was is I covered the half of the styrofoam ball with a piece of uh, canvas material just for show. And when I put in, I want to show this is very careful. When I put in my bling pieces, I made sure I had at least a six inch width of wire, okay? And I pierced the hole at the top, and then I pushed the bling down into here, and as you can see, it come out at the bottom. So every piece that come out at the bottom, I anchored to the handle, so like, look, nothing's moving, nothing's wobbly. It's sturdy. <laughs> See, she could hit somebody with this and it would it would do some damage. So the sturdiness, the integrity, and the time you take to construct this uh, bouquet is all and it, it has to be done. Now, there are companies out there that have these pre-made metal um, pieces where you take the bouquet you wire it and then you slip it through and then you wire it to that if you want nothing but bouquet of, bo of brooches but mine are stuck in there sparsely because I made some handmade chiffon flowers and a chiffon um, trim that I am putting together so and that all you're going to do to do this and I left this part out to make any type of these types of chiffon flowers that I am going to use they're super duper easy to do and um hold on okay so all you're going to do is you're going to get you about a three inch strip of chiffon you're going to fold it in half and you're going to do a running stitch all the way down to close it and then when you then when you pull it taut you can pull it taut into a poof or you can stretch it out like this if you want a complete tutorial on this particular chiffon style flowers I use in this bouquet please give me a thumbs up and let me know that that is something that you are wanting to do okay you want me to do Otherwise, um, I will assume that you know how to make chiffon flowers and have looked it up on Google and found the 10,000 ways you can make chiffon flowers. But if you need a visual tutorial, just let me know and I will be more than happy to share that with you. Um, this bouquet, I am taking a lot of heart into it. I am taken a lot of professionalism into it because if somebody wants to purchase this bouquet they will know that they have a sturdy piece a beautiful bouquet that they can feel confident and beautiful with so all right so now what this what this piece is intended to do is I did here is I made it long and this piece here is going to go around the base of the bouquet now um, you make sure when you pick you out a bling bouquet I think the most fun or the most one of the most practical things to do is have a focal point so my focal piece is this piece here is this large piece and that's going to be in the front of the bouquet and all of the other bling is just its friends okay and so this is my focal piece so everything is, is going to be uh, built around knowing that this is the focal piece. So always get you a big piece of bling. Alright, so just make sure everything is on, you know, not twisted around. You want all of your the seam to be, let's see, yeah, the seam to be all showing here. And the reason why I still have my needle in here. Is I, I've got to snip it out. Uh, uh, uh. Well, 
I got to knot it is what I got to do. I'll do that in a minute. So I just want to make sure I have enough length. Okay. All right. So if this is my focal piece, then this right here is going on the back. Okay. So what I'm going to do, my first hot bluing. is going to be doing this ruffle and now what I'm gluing to the piece is that seam that you see there you see that that raw seam right there that is what's being glued around this piece take little sections at a time and make sure Just take little sections at a time, just like that. This is a really great, a good, great quality chiffon. Um, I ordered mine online from a fabric clothing store. It was on sale at the time. This is a cream colored chiffon. Um, they do have whites and pinks. You know, got all kinds of colors. And I'm sure uh, Joanne's I know has. Um, chiffon you can get your chiffon there and as you go see you can pull if you need to and you're going to ask me well how long how much chiffon will it take to do this well that is all in how big you want your bouquet so I can't quite tell you with a six inch ball I put together four 36 inch length pieces because I want a lot of poof so you need to make a four 36 by four inches long and hang on just a second my battery's running low okay sorry about that my camera died so now, as you see here, I glued that all the way around the base. Now, of course, this is going to be cleaned up under here, most definitely. And the, um, the handle will most definitely be decorated as well. But I want to touch base with the flowers that I made. Now, these are just the same thing. You get a strip of chiffon and you fold it over and you do a running stitch and you just gather it and that's exactly what I did on these and I made several different styles I mean well actually two different styles I made a style that is has a more opened um, feel to it to where you can take the lighter and um, singe the edges and then I made the softer rolled rose look do you see there okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start gluing these in like that and you want to pick okay I'm going to start with my focal point so that one's going to go in there and then you're just going to let it bloom out underneath like that. I'm going to use one of these, the ones that are more opened and I'm going to put it right in there and let it bloom out around. I am going to pick another large rose one and I've made about four or five of each. You always want to keep things in odds. Okay, then you're just going to take it and you're going to glue it in there and you're going to let it bloom out just like that. Take one of these that have those singed edges. 
again add the hot glue keep it squeezed down if you have to bend your bling out a little bit and lay it in there and let it bloom out like that as you can see there okay uh, I'm going to take another rose one another glue stick I'm running out of glue stick I've got to order some okay I'm going to lay it down and I am going underneath here and I'm going to let it bloom out underneath there like that snip off any little imperfections as you can see there this is the easiest way to make a bling root you know bouquet in my book okay I'm gonna take um, another fluffy one here and I might have to do a couple of more so I might have to sew a couple of more. I'll lay that one right in there and let it open up. Ah! It's getting top heavy. <laughs> the more I add to it, just like that. And then if you see that you've cinched the areas a little too much, you can simply snip those out like that and it just gives it that different oh look okay here is another one this is a rolled rose one we'll slip it right in there like that and let it balloon out around see how much easier it is when you have um, everything prepped and ready to go and you can just add to it and of course just because I'm done with this uh, end of the bargain doesn't mean I'm done because you know you're gonna go through there and trim down a little bit that got uneven I am very particular when it comes to trying to keep things um, nice and soft and vintagey because see I can add a piece of bling in here I can add one here and I'm gonna add another rose bloom again it's better to make more embellishments than you need than to not have enough which you know you can always make more but you just prep you 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 think it out and you prep see how that just balloons out like that just it was meant to go in there yes it was let's see now the bouquet is fully done and see now you can um and to hide i've got to put one right there needs one right there um and to hide imperfections or whatever you can add a little more bling you can make you another little flower and fit it in there nicely like that see how pretty and if you have to just now look at that isn't that gorgeous and I'm not done my friends again I'm gonna go through here and just move things around 
I might need to do another flower for here. I'm not sure, probably. Yeah, I'm going to do one more. I don't have one more. I'll have to make one more. And like here, just trim off. Now these are the ones that have the raw edges and not these softer edges. And I want them to be really... even I want them to be that raw edged look like that but putting the chiffon along the bottom see yeah I'm definitely gonna have to add one there and that's what I'll do. So I'm going to make a few more flowers and I will be back to show you the rest of this piece. And see, I can also um, add another piece of bling. Like when I was telling you, you can add more bling. Like right there would be a good piece. So what you would do again is you would just pierce into the styrofoam. And then double pierce with like a longer piece like that pull it out and as you can see it is extremely sturdy so it's not gonna go nowhere and what I did is I went into the hole and I added a little bit of hot glue and I stuck my piece down in there like that and it's in there and then here again I would add another piece so I do I want to add another piece there because that's my focal point do I want to add mm. yeah I do so what I'm going to do is find an area, which is right there, I'm going to poke a hole, I'm going to poke a larger hole, like this, like so. You're going to add your hot glue, and then I'm going to stick that one down in there. And sometimes you might have to just work it in there slowly but surely all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a couple more flowers and then I will be right back to show you the the next steps okay so Okay, ladies, um, I put the extra flowers in there, and then I went and I put some extra pieces of bling, but I have to show you what I've done at the bottom here. Look at this. Look at heaps! Just drips and drips of pearl and uh, bling. Now, I'll show you exactly how I did that. You flip this over, and you glue it to the base of the piece here so you're going to glue it to the base of that area and then you're going to let it hang down and like I said this was my focal point piece so I let it hang below that focal point and these are just different links and you have fun with it these are scraps of uh, pearl I had left over so when the bride walks down the aisle and she holds it 
it just blankets and lays on her hand like that really pretty I also just loosely glued in some larger pearl um, just glued in some um, regular uh, rhinestone these are the glass rhinestones these are not your plastic ones these cost me a little pe a pretty penny for those so um, I use those um, we have old brooches we have broken pieces of things we have like little dangles here just gorgeous gorgeous gorgeousness of this also a uh, corsage pins I took some corsage pins and I pierced them down in there like that just to give it uh, some character and like here's a corsage pin and everything so the next thing that we need to do is definitely the handle so as you can see I have not done nothing to the handle um, because I was too busy making this yumminess so we've got to cover all of this right here and then uh, come up with the way we can cover the handle now you can go in the wedding department of Joanne's Michaels or Hobby Lobby and they already have these um, they're all uh, they, what they are they're velcroed pieces that go around uh, two inch handles as you can see here um, mine is shorter of course but you can cut it down but what you do is, is they give you a piece of velcro that you glue down right here and you're going to velcro it around the handle like this and such if you want to do that I mean that's an option um, you can do that um, I was curious I don't know if I want to do that but you would have a really pretty but this see my, my bouquet is a cream color and this is a white so it would really really um, be a stark difference so what I'm going to do I thought about like covering it covering the underneath here I just love this lace this is a lace um, that my friend has and I was thinking I, I just have to do that it's just going to be gorgeous to do that so what we're going to do is along the the base here you see right here along this base we are going to just fold and glue that down and then I'm going to show you how to keep that from looking floppy and everything so what I'm going to do got my glue gun going this is a cream color I told you this this bouquet is constructed let me tell you okay so we're just going to glue that down just like that This thing I waited before um, I'll weigh it after it's all done but before I started putting on the um, this it was a uh, it weighed over a pound this bouquet so um, <laughs> it's gonna be a big bouquet <laughs>
Okay, I got done. I put four, I done. I ran around four times, as you can see. One, two, three, four. And look at this. It just looks like a, oh, I just love this. I can't tell you how much I love this bouquet. Oh, my God, it's coming out more beautiful than I can ever imagine. Because I keep thinking, like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And I don't want to make it too, um you know, fruit fruity, but look at that. That lace is just absolutely perfection when it comes to that. So I'm going to flip it over. And as you can see, we have covered pretty much everything. And here I am going to show you how to cover this, this area here. Okay. My daughter got me a piece of wherever she put it she got me a piece of um oh right. of the pill and stick um felt i have here so basically what i am going to do is i am going to cut a rough circle out of my i'm going to make it large first so that i can cut it down as needed always make it larger than you need so that again like I said so that you can cut it down as needed so and this is that peel and stick uh, where it's adhesive on one side and it fills on the other you can get it Joann's Michaels or Hobby Lobby um, and stuff and here in the center I am going to make about a two inch diameter hole here. Just kind of guesstimating. Oh yeah, see if you make it larger than what you need, see you can easily put it around there and then wrap it. And of course all of this from this up is going to be covered as well so I'm going to cut this down a little bit more clean this up a little bit just take your time with this step and that's what you know crafting is there are no rules there are no set rules when you start setting rules and like oh you're not doing it right so and so is supposed to do it this way. Well, guess what? That's when crafting becomes uh, bitchy, and that's when it becomes not fun, and that's when it becomes like, well, well, screw it. So I don't listen to what other catty people say. I do it my way. If you like my way, you are welcome to try my way. If you want to better my way, go better my way create you a video and show me that my way sucked and yours is better and I will watch it and I will respect that you know so that's all you gotta do because we're gonna have to stop this this hate in the world man I'm telling you, in the cra our crafting is supposed to be our sanctuary, our peaceful time. Not worrying about what others say. Oh my god, that's gorgeous, Michaela. I saw the perfect opportunity. I went and crouched underneath the bush. Oh my gosh, I yeah, I definitely got to post that photo. My daughter takes. She needs to be a photographer. Tomorrow, I want you to. I want to charge your camera. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to get a picture of the snow. You still need to go outside and see it. It is like a thousand diamonds. Look, it's all glittery and it's like daylight out there because it's a full moon. Yeah, go take some more. I need gloves. Daddy's got gloves. Cause out there, my hand like I was pretty fine, but my hands. Put socks on it. Go get, uh, or, or, 
honey, I don't know. I don't know. If you want to take some more diamond pictures, then you need to, um, you know. But we just How long did it take your uh, camera to charge? Two hours. The battery. The, the charging part. See, now tomorrow night it's going to be, you know. Isn't it supposed to be a full moon for like two days? I have no idea. Okay, now I took the adhesive off the back of the felt. And now I am pulling and making sure that this is laid there beautifully. And I will add some E6000 underneath there to make sure that this piece, felted piece, never moves. Like I said, integrity ladies. Think, think long term, and if you don't want to use E6000, which you want to use hot glue, you can, but I like the, see all these little feathers, they're everywhere, um, I like the integrity and the, the stability of E6000 on certain things, and this happens to be one of them. Just bring me the bag here. Okay, I'm gonna tap that down. Okay, let me get this done and get my battery charged, and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and, like I said, glued the adhesive, used the E6000 to glue that down, and then I glued up the handle here, and now I'm just wrapping the handle with a cream colored um, trim, and I'm gluing in certain places and we're just going to wrap and wrap and wrap and then I'm going to do a French braid style on the handle using the same material the same trim and now here I'm just going to glue all the way around here and then I will snip off the excess and I'm going to bring it in like that and yes I have an idea to cover the hole here okay so you're going to snip off your excess like so and you're just going to glue that down just a little bit of hot glue nothing doesn't take a lot at all to hold that down so there we go very nice very nice covered handle so the French um, braided handle idea and I hate feathers oh my gosh I'm getting feathers everywhere okay so you're going to get you out some of the same lace or you can choose a different one but in this um, tutorial I am going to use the same one okay so just kind of spread that back a little bit there so that y'all can see this and everything make sure and what you're going to do you want at least a good enough length and you're going to start by crisscrossing here in the front and then you're going to crisscross in the back it taut. Now here in the back we are going to add a little bit of hot glue to make sure that this braid is not going to move. Okay? So you're going to put a little bit of hot glue there. So this is how you start it. Okay. So now it's really easy. 
you're just going to bring it to the front. You're going to crisscross. And I'm going to pull this off so I'm not fighting this. Okay, there we go. Okay. You're going to crisscross. And then you're going to knot it. Like this. Make it a taut knot. Then you're going to bring it to the back. Bring it back to the front. Tie and knot again. Tie. And knot again. Like that. You're going to bring it to the back like this making sure you see this you're going to tie pull it taut again crisscross in the back and make sure that all of your knots are even oh and what are you doing okay we'll let the door open okay I'm hoping you can see this and we'll have to pin this back because it keeps getting in my way. So I'm just going to put a pin here because I want to make sure that you see this part. As you can see you're going to cross it then you're going to tie it again. Pull it taut. Cross it. You're going to tie it again and pull it taut. Cross it. Tie it again and pull it taut. Just like that. See? You're getting that pattern. Then you're going to cross it in the back. And here. You're going to tie it again. And knot it in the back. Just like that is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to feed these tails down into here. And I'm going to hot glue them down into there. So that they never move. There we go. Nice. And to top this off. I'm going to use a button that I used in the bouquet and I am going to and see you can use a two inch piece of PVC pipe you can use a two inch like I did here um, just anything you want and you're going to press that and hold it for a few seconds And there you have a beautiful French knotted handle and just to give it the last piece of resistance if you want I'm gonna glue some pearls down there okay what did I do with my pearls ah yes here they are um, 
Where are my cream ones? Oh. Here we go. Here are some cream colored pearls. So, if you have any questions about how I did this bouquet, let me know in the script uh, in the comment section below. If you would like me to teach you how to make the simple chiffon flowers that I made, leave me a comment in the section below and I will do a separate video showing you a quick tutorial on how to do the chiffon flowers that I used um, to make this bouquet. If you have questions about where I got the bling, the bling I can't like send you to one store to purchase it all. It you just have to start collecting. You have to start looking at broken pieces of jewelry, uh, old necklaces with chunky pendants and buttons. You know, you can go to clothing stores, you can go to yard sales, you can go a little bit everywhere. But my friend is a uh, slowly launching her store so I will put a link in the description box below to her store where you can start ordering some of this amazing stuff because she does carry this lace here and she carries beautiful pieces of bling, appliques, you name it, she carries it. So reasonable prices, amazing, amazing, amazing quality. Um, impeccable customer service. I can't say more. Um, I, I just can't. I can't say more. She's just amazing woman. Amazing person that has been through the ringer like myself and still is rocking it. So, but there you go. Um, there is the bouquet. And that is the finished product. As you can see, everything is thought through. And if I shake this, the only thing it's shaking is this. See? Nothing's falling off. It is made beautifully. I would be proud to carry this little booger down the um, aisle ten times over. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Love it, love it, love it and I know you will love it too. So again, stay for photos, stay for detailed photos, and let me know what you think. And uh, until next bridal, shabby, party, uh, jewelry, sewing, I don't know what I'll be doing next video. I will see you then. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and share this video because that's what helps me grow and that's what keeps me going. So, love you all. Bye.